I said, and I'll stand by it to the death. Shoot him, Daddy. Shoot him at once. Well, why? My honor is at stake. Well, now, your honor. Absolutely. He impugned my honor. Impugned? What does that mean? Slander. He slandered my honor. He did? I said what I said, and I'll stand by it to the death. He admits it, see? Shoot him. Well, what is he admitting to? Why, he called me a... I won't even repeat the word. I didn't necessarily call you anything, but I said what I said, and I'll stand by it to the death. Well, just for the tally books, what did you say? I said that any girl who would permit a man to kiss her before they're formally engaged is a trollop. He said it again! Shoot him! Now, hold on. <laughs> no, don't hold on! If you're my father, if you love me, you'll shoot him. Well, I'm your father, and I sure love you, so... Oh, you shot him! You really shot him. Hey! He dies. If he dies, he'll be the first man ever killed with a blank cartridge. We use this to start the races on the fourth. Hey! I'm on fire! Oh, you poor dear. Poor dear? You'd have had me shot in cold blood. But it didn't happen. Yelling I insulted you and all. What you need is a good spanking. Oh, Deb! Daddy! Leave me out of this. I think I'll give you what you deserve. You wouldn't dare! Oh, wouldn't I? Ah! You'll think next time before you have someone shot. And this kid and yelling isn't gonna help you. Don't you fool! Daddy! Wait a Daddy! My daughter? Dev. Oh, you mean you stood there while that brute beat our daughter? G.W., what's happened to you in the last three years? That's part of son. Oh, isn't it enough that you've always treated me like a squaw without subjecting dear, sweet Becky to this crude, vulgar Catherine, way of Catherine, you women are always raising hell about one thing when it's something else you're really sore about. Oh. Don't you think it's about time you told me what put the burr under your saddle about me? I don't intend to stand here and hold a midnight conversation with an intoxicated man. And I am not intoxicated. Yet. Chief Puma? Yes, Sergeant. Big McClintock, we know you get us fair judgment. You gentlemen, follow me. Well, Jake? GW? Well, GW, it's been a long time. Not long enough, Cuthbert. Your husband is a rude man. Yes, Cuthbert, I know. Where are you want the Indians, Mr. McClintock? Mr. McClintock is not running this hearing. Sergeant, seat those Indians. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, be seated. No, the whole tribe here want to come into town. Proceed, Lieutenant. This hearing is now in session. Governor Cuthbert Humphreys presiding. Good luck, Daddy. 
afraid it's a packed court. Government edict number 826 has ordered that the Comanche Nation be transferred from their present reservation to Fort Sill. It is the government's claim, as filed by Indian agent Agard, that these chiefs, after being released from prison by a kindly government, did then rouse and incite defiance among the tribe against said order. It seems, gentlemen, that although some of these chiefs speak English, Chief Puma is quite at home in our language, they have chosen Mr. McClintock to be their spokesman. I speak for the Comanche, or rather I offer this translation. Proceed, Mr. McClintock. The Comanche say, we are an old people and a proud people. When the white man first came among us, we were as many as the grass is of the prairie. Now we are few, but we are still proud. For if a man loses pride in manhood, he is nothing. You tell us now that if we will let you send us away to this place called Fort Sill, you will feed us and care for us. Let us tell you this. It is a Comanche law that no chief ever eats unless first he sees that the pots are full of meat in the lodges of the widows and orphans. It is the Comanche way of life. This that the white man calls charity is a fine thing for widows and orphans, but no warrior can accept it. For if he does, he is no longer a man. And when he is no longer a man, he is nothing and better off dead. You say to the Comanche, you are widows and orphans. You are not men. And we, the Comanche, say we would rather be dead. It will not be a remembered fight when you kill us, because we are few now and have few weapons. But we will fight, and we will die Comanche. Thank you, Big McClintock. Am I to gather that Comanche defy the government of the United States? Yes, you may gather that the Comanche defy the United States government, or at least this commission. Gentlemen. It is the order of this court that these chiefs be incarcerated until such time as the detachment of United States cavalry be made available to escort them and the Comanche nation to Fort Sill. This court is adjourned. Oh, McClintock! You are important chief amongst these white people. Sway them. Have them give us few guns to make the fight worthwhile. Let us have one last remembered fight for end of Comanche. I almost wish I could arrange that, Puma. Ahalani cha. Ahalani cha. Sergeant. Yes. Carry on. It's sad, these changing times. It isn't the times that are changing, Mama. belly down drunk by now. I've been doing some thinking drinking, Bunny. Is that boxcar still on the siding? Well, sure, but... Uh, but it, what? I don't like it. You don't, eh? You figure if them Indians get out of there and leave the cavalry on a wild goose chase, that great white father is going to get nosy. Get nosy because... and he'll investigate. When they find out how that side saddle governor's been messing things up, they'll give those Indians a fair trial. But that's live ammunition in that boxcar. You know what'll happen if them Indians get some guns in their hands? Somebody's gonna get hurt. 
Is Puma's word good enough for you? Well, I don't... <laughs> McClinic, you got yourself a partner. Leave me out of this. Hey, McClinic. <laughs> good night, Bunny. Good night, Governor. <laughs>